Hello, I'm Pastor Daniel from Auburn First. And I'm Pastor Sheila from Colby United Methodist Church. And we're so glad that you're with us today as uh, Auburn First celebrates their Christmas pageant directed by uh, Crystal, who will be uh, joining us later. In the meantime, we're gonna do some prayers and we're gonna enjoy some music and, um, and then we'll see um, the kids. But now we invite you to our call to worship. God looks kindly in us when we are at our lowest. Rejoice in God our Savior. God has done great things for us in the past and will do great things for us in days to come. Rejoice in God our Savior. Christ's mercy is upon us, offering us hope in times of despair. Rejoice in God our Savior. Christ's love has made us whole. Rejoice in God our Savior. The Spirit's power strengthens our mercy and compassion. Rejoice in God our Savior. Even as we are filled this day, may we serve nourishing a world in need. Rejoice in God our Savior. Let us pray together. Mighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who have come together from across the miles. As we follow in Mary's footsteps, open our hearts that we might be filled with your goodness and your love. Live in us that we might bear the Christ light for all to see overshadow us with your presence that we might truly be blessed and offer your blessing of love and peace to the world amen how smart you are, even if you are. If someone does wrong to you, do not pay them back by doing wrong to them. Try to do what is right. Do your best to live in peace with everyone. Today we light the candle of peace. Jesus came into the world to give us peace in our own hearts, a peace we can share with everyone around us. Paul reminds us that peace isn't just a feeling of being relaxed or happy. 
Peace is something we actively work for in our relationships with other people. When we look at these candles and the light they give, let's think about people in our own lives who need someone to be happy or sad with, or who need our help. We can share our peace as we wait for Jesus. Hi, I'm Merrick, and I'm going to read Luke 1, 26 through 38. When Elizabeth was six months pre pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, How will this happen since I haven't had relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will sh overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Christmas pageants are so much fun. This year has been a very different year, as you all know. So we decided that our Christmas pageant would take place online on a Zoom call during our messy church meeting that we have every month online. This would not have been possible without uh, delivery by Judy. Thank you, Judy, for your delivery of the materials and the costume pieces. And also Paula, who went to extraordinary lengths to do our Away in a Manger song. We hope that you enjoy our pageant. A lot of love went into it. And I want to thank the Messy Church congregation for helping put this amazing program together. Thank you all for being a part of this important church community. We hope you enjoy the messiest Christmas pageant ever. This is a story of how Jesus was born. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth in Galilee to a virgin named Mary, who was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of King David. Greetings, Mary. The Lord is with you. Mary was confused, trying to figure out what the angel was talking about. She was also a little scared, as I'm sure you would have been too. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will rule, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. But how? What? How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. The Holy Spirit will be with you. You you will know the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the baby born will be holy. 
and will be called the Son of God, for the word of God will never fail. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord! How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior! God has made this promise to our ancestors, and God has been merciful. Mary still had to tell her fiancé, Joseph, that she was going to have a baby, a special baby, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Mary told Joseph all about what the angel had said, and Joseph wasn't sure what to think. But he was a good man and did not want to disgrace Mary, so he thought he'd break their engagement quietly. While he was considering this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to, to take Mary as your wife. The child within her was given by the Holy Spirit. Mary will have a son and you are to name him Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. I will do exactly what the angel told me to do. I will marry Mary, and we will name our son Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus said that a census must be taken throughout the Roman Empire. So everyone had to return to the town of their ancestors to register for the census. Since Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem, David's ancient home. He and Mary traveled there from the village of Nazareth, about 80 miles. By this time, Mary was very pregnant, nearing the time for her child to be born. While they were in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to her first child, a son. Mary wrapped the baby snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem. You will recognize him when you find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by many more angels praising God. Glory to God in the highest. And Glory to God in the highest. And peace and peace peace to all. To all. The angels return to heaven. Let's go. Let's go to Bethlehem to see the thing that has happened. The Lord has told us all about this awesomeness. Let's go. The shepherds hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby they had been told about lying in the manger. After seeing Jesus, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. We saw Jesus, the Messiah, a new king, a rescuing king, a forever king. Jesus. Hey. <laughs> all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. Woohoo! Yay, God! That was awesome! Jesus is here. We now have Savior. 
Woohoo! Wow, just wow. Hey. Now, not everyone was ex as excited about this new rescuing forever King Jesus as the shepherds and angels. Jesus was born during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise ones from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking about Jesus. Hmm. Where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, so he called a meeting of the leading priests and asked them where the Messiah was supposed to be born. It was Bethlehem. Herod asked the wise ones when the star first appeared. Then he told them to go to Bethlehem and search for the child so he could go worship him too. Though he had no plans to go worship Jesus, he was scared that Jesus was going to take his kingdom. The wise one went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. They went ahead of them and stopped over the house where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. I'm the biggest star today. I'm so bright. That star is so bright. Wow, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. so Let's go inside and worship our new rescuing forever king. Let's give him the gifts we brought. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. As Christmas gets closer and closer, we wait excitedly for the gifts we will receive. When the day finally arrives, we have so much fun unwrapping our presents. Exchanging gifts is a fun Christmas tradition that was started by God that very first Christmas. That's right. More than 2,000 years ago, with the birth of Jesus, God gave us the first and best Christmas present of all. Time. God's one and only son. For hundreds of years, prophets had told stories and given clues so that people would be looking forward to the coming Savior. The angels couldn't wait to shout and sing praises to God. Shepherds left the flocks to go and worship newborn uh, wise people traveled from afar, bringing gifts for the Christ child. So the there when you get excited about Christmas and presents, be sure to remember God's gift of Jesus, the best and most exciting gift of all. Everything God promised came true just as God said it would. There have been many different kings throughout the history of the world, but God sent the greatest king of all, a new rescuing forever king, Jesus. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas, everyone!
sermon is entitled Undeserving People. It comes from the angel's message to Mary found in Luke chapter 1. Have you ever run into people who feel like they deserve this and they deserve that? They just they just think that everything that they want they they just deserve it. They should have it. Right. There are some uh, television stars who think that they they should have everything uh, because because of their fame. And then there's social media. Some, I mean, I think social media really encourages that sort of thinking mm -hmm. that I'm special and whatever I want, I should have. Mm -hmm. And then there are the home improvement shows. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you run across uh, persons, couples who are looking for uh, a house to remodel and they want things their way, no matter what. Oh, no, but what I really like uh, in some of those shows is that uh, the couple comes in and they're being shown maybe a property that it's not it's not quite up to par yet might be a little might be dated a little dated and, and one of them comes in and says oh this is really old I wouldn't live here and then I look at the house that they're complaining about and I realize it looks just like my house and I'm like hey wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean that's terrible and I wouldn't live there? <laughs> but <laughs> we, we talk about this because in Luke's uh, version of the announcement, and in case you haven't noticed, we, we kind of have looked at the, the announcement to Mary from all the Gospels <laughs> at this point. And what we see is this young woman who understood that she was undeserving of this honor. Mm -hmm. We get a sense of that because it says that she was confused. Now she was probably perplexed that the angel would be coming to her. And she wondered, it says in the gospel, she wondered what kind of greeting 
this might be. Yeah, somebody comes in and says, hey, you who are highly favored, and she's thinking, I'm not highly favored, I'm just a general, basic young lady, and uh, why are you here? But I, I really like Mary's story because she doesn't try to hand it off either. Because sometimes, what do, you, what do you mean? <laughs> well, sometimes there's, um, you know how sometimes you, you tell something nice to someone and you say, oh, you look really nice, and they go, oh, it's nothing, right? Or, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I couldn't possibly. What I loved about Mary is at some point, she just says, okay, um, but how is this going to happen? She, she didn't go to the uh, pity or it can't be me or it's impossible. She went from, okay, this has really caught me off guard, directly into how am I going to get this accomplished? And the angel says, well, you're not going to do anything. God's going to take care of this whole process mm -hmm. for you. And this isn't the only place that we see this in the New Testament. Uh, you know, throughout, uh, throughout the uh, epistles, the, in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, we see many similar stories of undeserving people uh, seeing God's love and grace extended to them. And they, even though they know they don't deserve it, they willingly accept the gift. And the responsibilities, because sometimes it's not just he accept this love and grace, but sometimes here's something I want you to do. So we're going to just throw out some here are a few names, names and, and situations that you might remember from, from the Gospels and the letters. Mm. There's Paul. Uh, he started out as Saul, you might remember, uh, and as Saul, he was not a very nice person. As a matter of fact, he was angry, he was powerful, and he was violent. We know this. We have plenty of, of the writings to... And he was abusive of the early Christians. Mm -hmm. And unexpectedly, as he was on a journey, he encounters a light, and someone says to him, What? do you want me to do for you? Uh, he responds to that light, knowing that it is calling him to something. And then throughout the, the Gospels, we see Jesus healing the blind and the sick and people who are, are untouchable. Mm -hmm. and, and they accept his kindness. Mm -hmm. There's the woman with a, a bleeding disorder. Uh, there's a woman of ill repute uh, who... Oh, yeah. She's especially important. She is about to be stoned. Yeah, because culture at that point said that if you got caught doing something inappropriate like that, that you could be stoned to death in public. Mm -hmm. And that is what was about to happen to her when Jesus intervened. And then at some point, what happens is everybody walks away and Jesus says, who's here to condemn you? And she says, no one. And he says, neither do I condemn you. Go, go, and, go. go and sin no more, he tells her. And then there's the Samaritan woman, the woman uh, at the well uh, that Jesus uh, sits down and begins talking with. And oh, and he's not supposed to talk to women. No. Not, not then, not in that culture. Mm -hmm. But he talks to her and shares the good news of the Savior. Mm -hmm. And, and then he gives her a responsibility, like he gave Paul, to go and share that good news. Mm -hmm. So here we see God uh, interacting with and even calling people that uh, most would not expect. Oh, most would ignore. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that point in time, all of the people we've mentioned so far, people would have said, oh yeah, they're totally undeserving. They're not good enough. And then there's another group of people that Jesus surprisingly enjoyed spending time with, and those were the little children. Uh, the disciples were trying to keep the children away from Jesus because they didn't want the kids to bother him. But instead, Jesus said, let the children come to me and he blessed them. Ah, and I think it's wonderful. We, we want to dwell on this a little bit today because today we celebrate the, the, the 
kids program at Auburn and it, it's the celebration that Jesus would have approved of that there is a time to invite the children and to make them the center of things and, and I think so many times um, not for everyone but for some of us we feel like ah oh, there they go, running around, making noise. They're loud, around. they're making a mess. They don't but, pay attention. But it's just that that makes them so irresistible. Oh, yes. Yes, and I, I don't know uh, about, about you, but I know that whenever there's a, a kids program, I, I, I always know that whatever I'm going to say, most people aren't going to pay attention to, right? <laughs> right. Because they, they want to see their kids. And by the way, when we say their kids, I'm not saying they're like... Their right? own children, it's the, collectively. Because these are all our kids, right? And you know, it's, it's when uh, the directors always work so hard on the programs, but the most memorable parts of the program are the things that go off script. And the thing that the director just sort of cringes because it went wrong or something. But those are the things that people are talking about uh, months and years, years later. later. Yeah, undeserving people like, like little children um, that sometimes we, we think of as nuisances. Uh, Jesus, Jesus understood their value. Jesus loved them. Jesus wanted to bless them. And Jesus actually tells us that, that if we really want to be the best in the kingdom, we need to become like, like little children. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we keep coming back to this conversation with Mary and the baby because it is in this story that we see God setting in motion a, a torrent, a, a just this, I don't know, this a massive amount of love that is shed for us, this grace that is made available to humanity. Mm -hmm. So the point today, we hope you know that you are special but you are not perfect. None of us are perfect, and none of us are good enough to just kind of, I, I don't know if you, how you do this anyway, but to go and knock on God's door and say, hey, it's me, Daniel, you know, I never done anything wrong, so you have to do something good for me. None of us are perfect, so we therefore are incapable of earning God's grace, but, here it is, God's grace available to us all. From that moment where Mary is honored, we continue to see, not, I, 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 I use the word torrent, I like the, the rains that come down so hard. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not, it's not glimpses of grace. Mm -hmm. it's, it's these, um, it's God's Floods love. Floods of grace, grace. Exactly. coming our way. And um, at Christmas time, we celebrate that God loved humankind so much that he was willing to come and live among us, to uh, be with us. Uh, it really shows us that our God is a God of relationships. Mm -hmm. And our responsibility, honestly, is to look for that grace, to seek it out, um, to connect with it and then to take that love and grace and to share it with those around us. That is our invitation and our hope for you as we continue to take steps towards this wonderful celebration of the birth of this holy child. Amen.
as we bring the service to a close, we um, want to thank uh, Crystal for her work in bringing uh, kids and families together for uh, today's uh, program. We want to just acknowledge that for Christmas, uh, most of us are not where we want to be or with the people that we would like to draw together with for Christmas time. Uh, it is a fact of this time and we just encourage you to make the best of the circumstance, uh, knowing that it is for a short time mm -hmm. and uh, taking uh, precautions now may me make the difference um, in the coming years. And, and we are very hopeful for vaccines, but um, we know that and yet they are not that close to most of us yet. So we understand that the waiting is difficult. Uh, I often feel like uh, starting the senior year of high school or, or college where you know that the diploma is on its way. Uh, but it's you got to go through the whole year before you can uh, walk and get that diploma. So um, we pray that you will uh, wait patiently until uh, vaccines get to us. And we look forward to seeing you in uh, 2021, hopefully in a way that we're not seeing you mm -hmm. right now. We also want to take this opportunity to invite you to join us on Christmas Eve for uh, our worship service. Uh, it will be available at 5 p.m. on uh, December 24th, and you can watch it at 5 or any time thereafter. We hope that you will join us for that time of worship. This is our benediction for today. May God strengthen you according to the gospel. May the proclamation of Jesus Christ dwell in our hearts and in all our lives. And may the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.
pillow in Bethlehem, the king is sleeping, oh what a glory.